Stage separation confirmed. Bearing separation confirmed. Stage one transonic. Welcome to this week's episode of Insight. During this week's show, we're going to be covering two primary topics that are both related to science and the economy, which is somewhat of a segue from our usual very distinctly political or geopolitical topics. Um, the big news of the week has obviously been uh, the, the launch of the first Armenian state satellite. And the second issue that we're going to be focused on is the recent development of a large uh, uh, multinational high-tech company, NVIDIA, moving into Armenia and opening up its offices here a few weeks ago. Let's move on to the first topic of the week, which is the big story uh, that everyone's focused on, which is the launch of the first Armenian space satellite last week. On the night of May 25th at 10.35 Yerevan time, Armenia's first space satellite was launched into space by the company SpaceX uh, from Cape Canaveral, Florida in the United States. This project was a cooperative effort between the Armenian state, a Geocosmos company, and the Spanish firm Satlantis. By the end of 2023, uh, a satellite control center is going to be established in Armenia, uh, and a scientific team of specialists is going to be formed to be able to process the data and deal with uh, all the information that is coming back from this satellite. Stage one transonic. One of the main functions uh, of the control center uh, is going to be to control the images that are coming out of this satellite and specifically to transmit them to other satellite services and satellite operators. Uh, the satellite photos, according to the press release uh, by the Armenian state, is going to be for the purposes of border control, emergency prevention, management, environmental protections, climate change monitoring, and other priorities. Now. When analyzing uh, why this is an important issue, just beyond the scientific and other technical capabilities that this provides us, is, uh, is really about issues of state capacity. As you know, on this show, we're always talking about the general incompetence of the Armenian state uh, and its failings. So whenever we see the opposite, we need to point that out. Uh, overall in the world, there's essentially three kinds of states. There's the, uh, the entirely failed states that nothing works in, the Somalias of the world and others. Then where is the middle ranked states where almost most of the countries in the world fall in which the state can do all the administrative functions. They can tell you who owns what, they can marry people and all the rest, but they don't have planning capacity for future things, coordinating between private sector, public sector and getting things done. And lastly, which is the League of Advanced Countries, uh, which is probably no more than 20 or 30 countries, where the state not only can do its administrative function, but actually has planning capacity to actually uh, coordinate and do complicated, sophisticated things, coordinating private sector, public sector, and getting big things done. Uh, this uh, project was actually one of the few examples where our state actually was able to pull something off like this that was very much like how advanced countries do things. It's one of the few examples of a state competence that we have seen over the last 30 years. This entire project was established in secrecy, kept the state secret until after it's launched, and uh, the only people that were there for the launch was the U.S. ambassador to the United States and the technology minister. What this required was uh, essentially co close cooperation between state and private entities to make this work. Uh, we are likely to see multiple launches like this because the way these systems work is you just don't have one. You have multiple ones over the year that focus on different things and sort of increase your capacity. You would not be setting up a center to receive all this information if all you're going to have is one satellite. Uh, in reality, when you look at this from a critical perspective, uh, the way this was carried out is actually just as important as what this particular satellite does. Uh, there's a lot of speculation about its capabilities. Obviously, we're never going to know that. Some of the stuff is a state secret, and it should be like that. But it's actually quite a lot of fun speculating about it. The second big issue of the week uh, that we want to cover and highlight is the move of the large American conglomerate NVIDIA into Armenia. NVIDIA is not commonly known by ordinary people, but actually in the IT sector, it's actually a very significant company. And they have established a center here and they're hiring a couple of hundred people. Uh, and these are very 
sought after jobs. In fact, people are apparently applying them from different parts of the world. Uh -huh. NVIDIA is a global leader in artificial intelligence, uh, in uh, software, uh, from edge to cloud computing, and has also has a very strong presence in the gaming industry. Now, why is this important? It's because NVIDIA is actually the first large Western IT company that is moving here in a significant way. Uh, we've had uh, other companies that have footprints here, which are much smaller operations, or companies like Adobe that are, have, have a presence in Armenia because they bought out a local competitor. But for the first time, this is a large company that actually thinks it needs to have a presence given the IT developments that are going on in this country. And most importantly, what this is likely to do is to incentivize other large companies to start moving here. Uh, because there's always this, there's always the first brave one that goes and the other ones see that this is a place that you need to have a presence in and one follows the other and hopefully this is a chain that we will see. Now why is this particular story uh, important? Because I think what this really highlights is a sort of a transition that we're having in our IT sector in Armenia. Uh, if you look at the history of the IT sector in Armenia, we started out as an outsourcing uh, center, which means that we were essentially marketing cheaper labor. We had programmers here working for larger companies or large companies would essentially set up a presence here because we had a labor wage price advantage. Uh, from that, we sort of transitioned into the second step, which is to have your own startup scene and have your own companies. You're establishing your own companies. That's where wealth creation happens. And we've actually been very successful with that. We're on the verge of having two or three companies go public internationally over the next couple of years, which will have a quite a transformative effect. But the last and final leap, which is actually the hardest one to do, is to be actually a center in which uh, international conglomerates think that they need to have a presence here because of all the things that are going on, which is actually the hardest leap to make. And NVIDIA coming here is actually an example that we're sort of starting to make that leap, which is critically important. Now, this issues around uh, this company coming here and this sort of trend is really not simply economic. It also has political and even geopolitical implications. Uh, one of the things that we learned in the fall of 2020 is if your country is known for apricots and cognac, you will get as much attention as apricots and cognacs deserve. If you become a center in which a lot of large companies have a presence in, you become a lot more important to the world. And when you need the world to act, they will be far more likely to act and do so uh, rather than not to do so as they did in November of 2020. Uh, I know that there's many people who are always uh, saying that we spent too much time talking about the IT sector overall. Uh, and obviously, there's no country in which everyone can be a programmer or engineer. That is certainly true. All other parts of the economy are relevant. Uh, but in reality, we don't talk about the sector enough. And let me tell you why. Because there's only one sector of our economy that can have a qualitative, massive change to our fortunes on a short-term basis. In the world today, technology is actually the number one creator of wealth. Nothing even comes close to that. Uh, if we're going to be a successful country, this is something, it's the sector of the economy that we need to make work. When looking and projecting over the next 20 years as far as a country's development and what you want to be, uh, in reality, you're either becoming a center of technology or the sciences. Uh, or you're simply, your country is going to be left behind in the, the globally competitive system that we are all living in. Uh, in very concrete economic terms, uh, the future is not in oil and gas pipelines and the dictators and the degenerate families that own them, as important as that actually might be in the short run. Uh, the future is on how free your country is and how many smart people you keep, and more importantly, how many smart people your country and your system can attract. Uh, in short, our job is this, to stay free and accelerate the development of the IT sector, to get rich, because that is the fastest way to reach the goals that we want and to create the Armenia that we all dream of. Thank you for joining me in this week's episode of Insights.